An arrest has been made after two historic churches were severely damaged by a fire on Monday. Let's get right to Pat Paris, who's field anchoring our coverage from Douglas. Pat. Yeah, Heidi, it is so sad to see what's left of these two historic churches here in Douglas, all destroyed by fire, of course. Just walls still remain, as you can see. Two days after these two historic churches went up in flames, the community still in disbelief, and now we know these fires were deliberately set. Well, with the help of ETF, a Douglas man has been arrested in connection with these fires. Douglas police have identified him as 58-year-old Eric Reidenauer. I spoke with Douglas Mayor Donald Hewish today via Zoom. He's at a border conference in Nogales, but is still being updated on the investigation. That's correct, Pat. They have a uh, gentleman in custody right now in ATF hands, and uh, they're building the case. They feel comfortable with it, and they're building the case uh, that uh, he was the individual that started the the fires. He's been in our community, we understand, about four years now um, and don't know any of the reasons why right now. Now, Mayor Hewish commends the efforts of federal and local authorities in quickly making an arrest. Now he turns his attention to helping this community come together after this tragedy, the loss of two of the four churches that make up the church square. And I'm going to bring in now live uh, Alexis uh, Ramajulu, who was here right when the fire started, basically. You've been here for now two, uh, two onto the third day. You've seen this all unfold, the tragedy here in Douglas. Yeah, Pat, and the announcement of the arrest it is providing some closure to those involved and affected by the fire, including the pastors. But, you know, it's still a long road ahead um, in recovering for this congregation. Today was the first time Vicar Caleb Collins of St. Stephen's Episcopal Church was able to step foot into what remains of the church since the fire Monday morning. Multiple buildings on the church's lot were damaged in the fire. Collins says being inside the remains of the building is heartbreaking. It's really hard to walk into an office where you've met with people and talked about life and you've talked about grief and also joy and to be in that place and just see ash cover the floor. It's, it doesn't seem real, but, it, but it's happened. Collins is working with the church's insurance company on what ne what's next for the building and will have the remains boarded up for added security. Well, Pat, we've been here for a while and people are still coming up to us in disbelief and shock about the destruction of these two uh, churches that have been here for more than 100 years. Yeah, it's like they don't believe that it really happened because it's, as we mentioned, so tragic and just uh, disbelief is a great word uh, for what you see here. You you just can't believe the damage. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right, Alexis, thank you very much. All right, we've got more detail about the charges against Eric uh, Reidenauer. Uh, Nine on your side, Craig Smith is now joining us live at the Tucson Federal Courthouse with the very latest. Craig, take it away. Well, we understand that Reidenauer has been brought up to the Tucson area, but we were told not to expect him in court here at Tucson Federal Courthouse today. That's more likely tomorrow or perhaps Friday. And in connection with that, we should be able to see some documents that will shed more light, more detail on this case. But for now, we are able to take a more detailed look at the law. Now, federal law has several variations of arson charges, but right now, Eric Reidenauer is charged with one of the most basic. It's mainly aimed at arson of business properties and pertains to, we're going to quote here, actual or attempted damage or destruction by means of fire or explosives of any building, vehicle, or other real or personal property. Now, if convicted, Reidenauer faces at least five years in prison or up to 20 years if someone had been hurt in the fire, the range would run from at least seven years to up to 40 years in prison. Now, it's important to note that this, what this charge does not mention, there are versions of federal arson law that relate to terrorism, but those laws have not been charged in this particular case. Live at the federal courthouse at Broadway at Granada, Craig Smith, KGON 9, on your side.